Welcome back. This is Kotal, and this is the first in a new series that I am terming Kotal's Officer's Basic Course. The course is basically designed to share some best practices that I've observed in the game War Rights to just assist unit leaders and uh, the general population. First subject, which we cover today, is LOCs. Lines of communication, or LOCs, refers to the route by which supplies and reinforcements traverse from their base of support to the unit operating in a forward position. Keeping a line of communication open is vital, though importantly not always essential in all circumstances to maintain a force in combat. Any engagement will inevitably lead to an attrition of that force, and the lines of communication enable the regeneration of combat power to continue operations. In War of Rights, this means your troops. Without regeneration, supported by LOCs, it is impossible to maintain a formation within the game. Within War of Rights, infantry units, sorry Artie, sustain their forces through LOCs through the gameplay mechanic of respawning. Respawning is not an infinite resource, and it is represented by the ticket and morale system, but we will leave the subject of casualty management for another episode. For our purposes here, there are two respawn methods available. Number one, through the flag. And number two, redeploying at main. We will discuss both, but we will start with respawning via the flag. The rate of flag response depends on the flag bearer's formation status. That is, one respawn per 10 seconds for information, or six per minute. One respawn per 20 seconds for skirmishing, i.e. three per minute and zero for out of line formation. Understanding the rate of your respawn speed is essential to help calculate whether your position is sustainable. A further consideration when calculating the feasibility of a position is that it takes approximately six seconds to affix a bayonet and approximately 20 seconds to reload a rifle, assuming standing and a standard firearm. Additionally, respawns must take time to move out to the line and set themselves into position. This means approximately an additional 30 seconds total are needed to get a soldier from respawning in to fully kitted out and ready to engage back in the line. So, for example, if you have a 20-man unit at your disposal, i.e. 18 rifles, one officer, and one flag, if you take four casualties every 30 seconds, a standard volley time, your attrition rate will be higher than your respawn rate three respawns every 30 seconds. It will take approximately five minutes to go from 18 riflemen to five, the skirmishing. Furthermore, this will be compounded as each successive volley you can deliver back will be even lower due to the time required to reset a soldier after respawn. So although after the first shot you have recovered to 17 men, only 14 riflemen will have full kits and be ready to return fire for that second volley. This is compounded even further by disruptions to the flag, which will be discussed more below. There are tactical reasons to engage in a losing fight. However, unless the opposing unit has a greater attrition rate than you, or you are pursuing some other objective like fixing the opponent, your respawn at that rate will not sustain your force and you are engaging in a losing battle. Next, we will discuss some tactics, techniques, and procedures to mitigate disruptions to your flag respawns, as well as some TTPs to disrupt the opposing flag. Let's begin with disrupting the opposing flag. With the possible exception of the officer, the flag is the most critical element for any unit. Taking out a flag can delay re-entry for respawns, and even cause a soldier ready in line to abandon his position to pick up the flag, losing their shot if he, they had one loaded. This technique further increases attrition rates to greater effects than simply killing a soldier in line. Although massed fire should avoid over-concentration on a single point, keeping this target in mind should always be a priority. For example, if you have a highly skilled sharpshooter or two, consider assigning them the task of keeping the flag down, either at the independent or even during volley fire. In general, at the independent fire, your soldiers should prioritize the flag as a target if they are able. A disruption of the respawn rate by knocking down the flag will further delay additional forces coming into the defending side, creating a compounding effect on their casualties. 
even forcing the flag to seek cover and possibly kneel is beneficial as it may double the time for respawns. In addition, as the time for respawning by the flag goes up, there is an increased probability that soldiers will, either with or without orders, respawn at main out of frustration, further separating them from the fight. This is an ideal situation for the attacker, as the defending unit will increasingly lose unit coherence and command and control. For folks at main, they will have two unappealing choices. They could remain there, out of the fight until the unit all gets killed, allowing for a local superiority in combat power to develop since those troops are no longer participating in active combat. The other option is that they can move out by themselves, with the risk of individual troops getting lost or being ambushed at the cost of likely out-of-line tickets from LOC disruptions, which will be discussed more below. Or even potentially arriving after the fight is already over and being killed separated from the main line. Such a scenario is beneficial from a ticket's perspective, as well as keeping the unit disjointed and unorganized, and therefore combat ineffective. As for TTPs protecting the flag, the first thing to consider is placement. They should be in a position to enable rapid respawns by being in formation, but they should be cognizant not to be so forward, if they can avoid it, that the respawns appear either in front of the firing line or in front of cover. This is a bit of an art, and the game can be finicky, but as flag bearer, you have no other role and should be working to find the ideal spot. Seek full cover whenever possible, especially if it allows you to continue standing, such as behind a boulder, a defilade, or a tree for some examples. Keep in mind, if you are not actively respawning in, which the bottom right info section tells you, you do not have to remain in line and can seek cover close by until individuals are knocked out. At that point, you can move forward to enable respawns, and once complete, retire back to cover. A flag bearer can kneel down if it provides cover, and they are not actively respawning folks in. If a flag goes down, it is best for an individual who does not have a reload to pick it up, rather than for an individual who does have a full load and will lose that shot. When positioning the flag, consider that it will be a bullet magnet. If still in line, it may be better to offset the position and not be in the center of that line, but rather on a wing to draw fire away from that center. A missed shot at the center has the benefit of allowing hits left or right to still find a target, while the wings only offer a 50% exposure. Consider also fully separating from the formation as the flag in cover to draw fire away from the main line. However, you still want to keep close enough that you can move out when ordered. Finally, the flag should never be next to the commander, as this will draw fire towards them and increase the likelihood of them becoming a casualty. If a commander is down, there will, by definition, be some loss of command and control for the unit. During charges, the flag should be at the rear, although not necessarily the last man, to avoid going down. Furthermore, they should consider their retreat or egress route if the charge does not go well. A downed flag in enemy lines is a huge disadvantage. As even the rest of the unit can respawn at main, it takes time for the downed flag to despawn and be available for respawn, putting your unit at a distinct disadvantage as they cannot respawn troops forward without the flag. Furthermore, for small raids, consider positioning the flag at a friendly nearby unit that can secure it and allow for a rally point to be established. Finally, if concealment is required, such as for an ambush or a raid, consider leaving the flag with a friendly unit as it will likely give away your position and spoil any surprise you were hoping to achieve. The other main method for an LOC is from main spawn. Spawning at main has the benefit of circumventing the timer required for the flag. Depending on the time for travel to the unit and the safety of the route, respawning at main can be beneficial to rapidly restore your unit's combat power. It also has the benefit of generally allowing for full kits and organization to occur in relative safety, although certain maps do allow both artillery and infantry to fire into spawn. If this appears to be the case, Seek cover immediately after spawning in, rather than remaining in the open while getting your full kits. 
The main vulnerability presented by spawning from main is the need to traverse territory to return to the main battle site. The locations of main spawns are known to both sides and visible on the map through the F2 key. Reading the terrain from the site of battle to main spawn can allow for a disruption of LOCs and enable an advantage at other points in the battlefield. There are a few methods for disrupting the LOCs, and depending on your unit and style, some may be more fitted to your unit than others. The first is harassment, carried out best by nimble skirmishing units. This technique means placing the unit in a position to overwatch the approach and target the enemy from a position of relative safety. This allows for sniping of stragglers and rambos coming out of spawn for very valuable ticket farming and can have an outsized impact on the course of the battle. For larger units, harassing fire can temporarily distract an opponent. If they ignore you, you can still kill a few and dilute their combat power slightly before they arrive at their destination. Killing officers is especially useful at this point, as some units will freeze without direction or go to places not intended by the officer. On the other hand, this may have the benefit of outright distracting the enemy force entirely. They may shoot at you, discharging their rifles and delaying further movement until they can get their reloads. Even more, if they turn to engage you, this will disrupt them from whatever other objective they were previously pursuing. However, you may find yourself quickly wiped out if you were not careful. Consider an egress route from any position of overwatch that you establish. Dense woods and cornfields can be ideal for such operations, and can lead larger units into fruitless chases into these areas, further preventing them from engaging in the decisive points of the battle. The second is interception, in this case applying to larger formations that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other major formations, although many of the same principles still apply. Overwatch can be used, but roving bands hunting for small groups can also be used. Such search and destroy missions could stay mobile and constantly find small groups that can be quickly swelled up and then moving on from them, often leading to a general crisis in the enemy's lines to try and deal with the disruptions. Furthermore, this attacking unit should seek points of ambush from which they can get to jump on a unit and deliver a devastating attack before they can react effectively. However, time is always imperative as any delays in movements will open the attacker to being wiped by a concentrated counterattack by the opposing force. Finally, these backfield attacks may even against stronger units, fixing them into a major fight, including potentially a melee, to delay them from reaching a forward position during a decisive moment, such as during a cap attempt. Even if the attack is not successful, if the leadership is disrupted, units can be delayed for a substantial amount of time as they reorganize, get their reloads, and then figure out their next move, all while the decisive fight is occurring elsewhere without them. Both harassment and interception can be effective tactics, but if isolated and cut off, they can result in a major loss due to a wipe far behind enemy lines. If this occurs, then defender can take advantage not only of the ticket value from the wipe, but also from the inbounds created as the defeated unit will have to respawn likely at main and a new attack can occur at a decisive point without them. Furthermore, depending on the circumstance, it may be better to bypass these units, especially if they are merely harassing, to get to a critical and time-sensitive fight. Understanding how to protect and disrupt LOCs can be decisive in enemy engagement. There are a number of tactics and techniques that can give you an edge in this regard, giving you an advantage over your opponent. However, these are just some of the aspects of LOCs applied to war rights. Please continue the discussion below. How do you best deal with LOCs? What do you agree with, and what did I miss the mark on? What other subjects would you like to see a deep dive on? Comment below and let me know. This has been Kotel's Officer Basic Course. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. A good teacher. He really seems to care. About what, I have no idea. <laughs>